Um, I've been with Sensi for five years, and a big part of what I had to learn the hard way was follow-up. Raise your hand if you absolutely hate, or have never done follow-up. Is it daunting? Yes. Is it scary? Yes. Is it annoying? Yes. yes. All the above. Right? You know why? We don't like hearing no. Welcome, ladies. You missed my intro. You don't know who I am now. Sorry. Um, we don't like hearing no. We are afraid to pick up the phone and call people because we are afraid of rejection. We're afraid to get asked a question we don't have the answer to. Has that ever happened? <coughs> right? Got a kibosh that one in the general session this morning. Did he not say reach out to your upline, to your sponsors, to the news tab, to your workstation, to your catalog, to your friends, to your teammates? We have so many resources, right? Our number one tool for learning about our business and our product is what? Workstation. You want your customers to learn about your products from what? You. From you and? How about your catalog? Our catalog has all the information that we need about our product and even how to join now. Thank God for them putting back the compensation plan. <laughs> right? So if we expect our customers to learn about our products or to see what they look like from our catalog, then don't you think we should? Yeah. yeah. Okay? So get that out of the way and also know, you know what guys, we're not perfect. I don't know all the answers and I bet you don't either. So if they ask you a question you don't know, say, hey, that's a really good question. I'm gonna find out for you. Right? Okay, so that fear should be taken out by you learning your product. The other one is hearing no. And hearing no comes from a mentality of sales. Hearing no is a rejection we don't like because we're asking for something that somebody doesn't want now. Let me explain that. I'm gonna use my gum analogy, and hopefully you can take this back with you and use this with your teams as well as yourselves, okay? First and foremost, when you leave here today, I do not want you to ever sell Sensi again. No. What? <laughs> I don't want you selling it anymore. I want you to share it. I want you to share the experience. I want you to share the product. I want you to share the opportunity. When you get that mentality in your head, <laughs> no won't matter. Why? You're standing in the line at the bank. You got a hankering for a piece of gum. You reach into your pocket or your pocketbook or whatever. You open up the pack. You unwrap a piece, pop it in your mouth, and you I don't care. They're lost. Right? When I'm sharing, I don't care if they say no. I really don't. And I'm not trying to be mean or insensitive. But somewhere, someone's going to say, yeah, sure, no problem. Right? So when you take that selling out of your head, and you're sharing the product of Sensi or the opportunity, if they say no, you're like, hey dude, it's your loss. <laughs> you wouldn't really say that. <laughs> That's what you're thinking, who cares? Who cares? And it may not be right now. It could mean later, who knows? I might not want a piece of gum right now, but God forbid I wake up tomorrow morning, my mouth is stinking. <laughs> I'm gonna need some gum, right? Okay, so when you take the selling out of it, no, doesn't matter. Now we're gonna progress this a bit further, and the next day, 
This gentleman is standing at Circle K and he's like, Ugh, I need some gum. What was that gum that lady offered me? Because it was really good yesterday. <laughs> Takes the, gum, the pack of gum, puts it on the, co the counter, and he buys it. Guess what I just did? I sold some gum. <laughs> I might not be making commission off of it, but I sold some gum. Right? So do you see the mentality and the mindset that we can take on when we shift our minds from selling to sharing? It doesn't hurt so bad when we say no. Right? Is that something you guys can do? So from now on, you're not selling Sensi anymore. You're sharing. Okay? And a good way to do that is through follow-up. I'm going to show you guys a system. I but it's going to work. It's going to make your business easy. It's going to allow you to do follow-up without being scared of hearing no and without being scared of not knowing your product and without being scared at all. There's not going to be any intimidation at all. Super easy, super simple, and cheap. So if it costs me money, I don't want it. And if it's hard, I don't want to do it. So what you're learning today is going to be very simple. Promise. Okay? I know there's some numbers people out there, so you ready for this? Now I've practiced it four times. I know it. I stink. All right. You want to earn $600 a month. It's a pretty good amount, right? When you're starting out or when you're in it, good. And, you know, when you get up higher, you can make more money. If you like income, disclosure. <laughs> $600 a month, you need to sell 2,000 PRV, right? Because you get 30% commission on a 2,000 PRV month. And an average order is about $40, would you not agree? Yeah, okay. So you would need 50 new customers every month to get your 2,000 PRV. Who feels that's a little overwhelming, a little much? That's a lot, huh? That's a lot. 50 new customers every single month? That's 600 new customers a year? And take it even further, that's 1,800 customers every three years? I wouldn't have made it past the first month with my 192 people. I'm just saying. Right? <laughs> it's true. I wouldn't be here. So, let's make it fair, okay? 600 new customers, let's say these 50 people buy twice a year, and that's pretty reasonable because they're gonna buy from, from our catalogs. We get two catalogs a year. Let's say they buy from the spring and they buy from the fall. Doable? Yeah? Okay. So now you've cut it from 600 to 300. That's a little bit easier. Now we're talking about one new person a day. <coughs> When you look at it like that, you best start hustling every single day, right? But when you look at it as, well, you know what, you throw a party in there, you might get 10 new customers at a party. Throw a fundraiser in there, you could get 50 to 100 new customers in one, right? Throw some Facebook parties in there, get even more, right? How many people do Facebook parties? How many? That's a lot of you. How many are in the Facebook party group? Okay. Facebook party group. It's the name of the group. It's pretty genius. Um, if you want to learn how to do them and up your customer count, use Facebook. That's my plug. I'm sorry. Um, okay. So. We got our one customer a day. So how is it we're going to increase our customer base and not only depend on those 300 customers every year if they're only buying twice a year and potentially might not buy that often? We've got year runners, right? We got people that buy once a year, two. But then we got people that buy every two weeks. Well, they shouldn't be customers. They should be consultants, first of all, right? So how do we get that many people to keep rebuying or to what I call McDonaldize them, let's upsell them to something else, right? How do we do that? Follow up. Thank you. <laughs> follow up. We have to follow up. Okay, so 
So I'm going to ask you another thing. Fortune is in La Follow. Have you ever heard that? Nobody? No. You've heard that, that term, fortune is in the follow-up? No? Okay. What does fortune mean? Tell me. Money. Say it out loud. Go ahead. What does fortune mean to you? Money. Success? Fortune. Balance. Money? Keep them coming. <laughs> Achievement. Good one. Fortune. Yep. Success. What's that? Luck. Oh, there's no such thing as luck. All right. Um, all great answers. Great answers. But let me ask you a common ground on all of them. Will fortune happen overnight? <coughs> there's going to take work, time, effort, right? Okay. So this system is going to help us to get to that next level of gaining more customers based on our follow-up with our original customers by working more parties, by having upgraded sales, <coughs> buying something that they wouldn't have bought already. Okay. Anybody heard of the 222 system? <coughs> okay. If you've heard it, I got a little twist, so it's not exactly the same. Um, and if you haven't, today is your lucky day. <laughs> Two, two, two. Two days, two weeks, two months. Two days. You are not going to sell on this call. And if you do, you will lose your customer. I promise you. Do not sell. Do not ask for a sale. Okay? You're going to lose them. Guaranteed. Your two day follow up is to make sure they got their order. It's also to make sure that the hostess has delivered their order. <laughs> How many times does that happen? Right? You get a phone call. Uh, it was a party about a month ago and I still haven't gotten my order. It happens. Okay? So you want to make sure that you're following up to make sure they got their order. If it was a PWS order, follow it, track it, make sure they got it. Call two days later saying, hey, I noticed that you got your order. Just check and make sure you got it off your doorstep or whatever, okay? The purpose of the two-day follow-up is twofold. One, make sure they got it. But two, to find out what customer service does <coughs> to them. Let me explain that. So I walk in to Macy's. You're right here, I'm sorry. <laughs> I could, I'll use her next. You walk into Macy's and they're like, Hi, how are you? We have 10% off today. If you buy one pair of jeans, you can get two for free. The three are, the, the shirts are all on sale too. Blah, blah, blah. Can I help you? Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know. As a matter of fact, I might not shop here. Right? That's that pushy salesperson, like in your face. Okay? Want to hear something funny? To me, that is way pushy. And I will back up my bus. Do not get in my bubble. Do not tell me what's on sale unless I ask you. I know what I want, I know what I need. That's how I am. Some people are like that, right? So my experience of great customer service is not that. In our very first class today, it was proven to me right off the bat, which is why it's now incorporated in tonight's, this afternoon's training. I went up to somebody and I said, what is great customer service to you? And her response was, you better call me when the new buddies come out because I don't want to be left behind and not get it. <laughs> wow. That's a totally different view, isn't it? You know, her experience of good customer service isn't the same as mine. So you can only provide the best customer service that you have ever experienced. Does that make sense? You can only give what you know. So how are you going to find out what her customer service looks like? You're going to ask. You're going to ask. Point blank, you're going to ask. Because you're not going to know unless you ask. Right? So in the two days, you're going to make sure they got their order. Oh yeah, we'll be
before I hang up, can I ask you a quick question? Sure. What does great customer service look like to you? Best have your pen and paper ready. Because at that point, what they tell you is going to dictate how you follow up. It's not how you want to do it, it's what they want. Okay? And at that point, you can also set some expectations and say, okay, you know what? Awesome. Thank you for whatever you told me. Let them talk, right? Let them tell you what it is. And say, I usually call in a couple weeks. And if that's okay, you can expect to hear from me that day. Doable? You didn't ask for sale. You're not going to hear no. Right? Okay, any questions on two days? Two days you're not selling. Two days you're asking if they got the order, and you're also finding out what customer service looks like to them. Right? Okay. So the next one is. No, I talk too fast. <laughs> um, so the next one is two weeks. You are not going to sell on the two-week call. <coughs> Boy, am I making this easy for you or what? <laughs> right? No sales. No sales. The two-week follow-up is now a bit more about communication and relationship building with your customer. Finding out a little bit more about them. Okay? So you're going to say things like, hey, Joe, how's it going? <coughs> So, what do you think? Are you loving it? What's your favorite product? What's the favorite scent you got? Coconut lemongrass. Coconut lemongrass is awesome. Do you know that they even make laundry detergent in that scent? Not selling. I'm sharing facts about our product. Now there's an opportunity that they heard, oh, I can get coconut lemongrass and something else because I love that scent. Okay? And you say, you know what? Scentsy just made us these remarkably amazing packets of laundry samples that I can send to you. Do you want me to drop one off this afternoon or I can mail one out to you? So all you're doing right now is sharing the samples, trying to upsell them, show them some other options that they might have. What is an excellent excuse to call a customer for with our scent and warmer of the month? We can do that every month, right? Every month we can do that. So when you're on the, on the phone with them for two weeks, on the two week follow up, you can say things, you know what? I just smelled the new scent of the month and it's amazing. And because you like coconut lemongrass, you're gonna love this one. And I just happened to have made a fresh batch of samples. <laughs> Would you like me to send you one? Okay? So here's your gathering. You know, one, and write this stuff down. You, have, you guys have an amazing workstation, by the way. In the workstation, under the contacts tab, if you pull up that customer's name, did you know that there was a notes field in there that you can fill up with information about them? Yeah. Use it. Put the date you call. Favorite scent, coconut lemongrass. Sun plays hockey, stinky equipment. Knees laundry stuff. <laughs> right? These are conversations that you're having that you just need to listen. One of the terms that I like to use a lot, and it's just visual, I use it for visual, it offends some people, but do not vomit information to them because if you do that, they will shut you off quicker than anything. They don't want to hear about stuff they don't care about. And when you're doing that, when you're vomiting information, you overwhelm them. It's like when they're joining. When you're talking to somebody about joining your team and you're just constantly, oh, you can get a trip, you can earn some money, you can uh, meet some people, you can travel. If someone had come to me and said that, I'd been like, uh, I've traveled. I don't really need any more friends. <laughs> I don't need to make any money because my husband works and he told me to stay home. None of those things would have resonated with me. But if someone would have listened to me talking and heard what I was talking about, they would have said, you know what, Edie? You're boring.
bored. I got to <coughs> fill your time. I would have been like, sign me up. And guess what? I did. <laughs> right? But you gotta listen. So when you're constantly giving information to people, you're not gonna hear what they have to say. So you ask a question, just be quiet. Let them talk. Right? So you're too weak. You want to make sure that you are creating and building that relationship with them without technically selling. You know, they may come back and say, oh my God, I fell in love with coconut lemongrass and never want to run out. Please order me five bars. No. Right? They say, no, I get you They six. want to buy, they're going to buy. Right? <laughs> I'm going to give you six because I love you. <laughs> Right? So you might get a sale, but that's not the objective of that call. Okay? You don't need to do that. And look what I'm doing. I've taken the stress off the first phone call because we're not selling. We're just making sure they're getting the order and what does customer service look like to you? That's not stressful. That's not overwhelming. We can pick up the phone. And you know what? In this day and age, you can do it by text if that's what they want, right? And you're going to find that out at the two day call. You say, what kind of communication do you like? They're going to say, I need to text because if my thumbs are not moving, I am not happy. <laughs> right? But that's the day and age, so that's okay. If they say, you know what, I live on Facebook, reach out to me on Facebook. Okay. I can do that. So I might have even taken the phone call out of the equation altogether in that two day call. Right? How e Is this easy? Is this doable? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any questions on the two week call? The next one, two months. Two months. Now we're selling. We're not really selling, we're sharing. But we can expect some sales because we might ask for them. We might ask for them in this one. And do you know why it's going to be easier to ask for them in this call? Because you've talked to them before. I heard, I heard too. You'll have already built a relationship with them because now you've, to, you've talked to them at least three times, right? Uh, hello. <laughs> right? Two-day follow-up. Two-week follow-up. You've talked to them three times. I got a relationship with you. It's gonna be easier to talk to you this time. Hey, how was the hockey game you talked about? Did you guys win? Right? I bet you're out of your coconut lemongrass now. <laughs> got a deal for you. And to top it off, we got a new scent. Why don't I send you a sample? Did you guys hear a lot about samples today? Yeah. Every radio. Why? They are the easiest tool we have in our arsenal. They are the best sales tool we have. You don't have to say a word. It's like a pack of gum. I got a sample in my pocket and I hand it to the person behind me in the bank line and I don't say a word, what's going to come out of their mouth? What is this? And did you know that a conversation started with a question leads you free talk? <laughs> yes! Right? But we don't want to vomit information. We want to answer the question. Oh, you haven't heard of Sensi before? And then you might get, O-M-G, you're a Sensi consultant? Get it, Bolts! Or they may say, you know what? I have never heard of Sensi before. What is that? And we still, guys, we still have so many people out there that have no clue what Sensi is. It's ridiculous to me. I went to Idaho two weeks, a week ago. Gosh, I've been on the road forever. A week ago. Did you guys, you went to the social media? Yeah, I, just have my face on the screen. <laughs> I went to Idaho to do that video. Do you know how many people in Idaho 
don't have no clue what Cincy is? It's our hometown. It's our, that's where we come from. No way. There are tons of people. We were standing in the lobby at, at Cincy, and there were people coming in off the street saying, we saw this huge campus with green and purple trees and had to see what it was. They have no idea. No idea. So what are samples good for? Okay, I have a question. How many of you have samples on you right now? Whip them out. I want to see. I want to see what you got. What do you got? Sample? You dab it right in their hands. Do you see that, guys? She's got her lotion. She puts it right in their hand. Here. Right? I'm not going to do that. <laughs> right? That's a great way to do samples. What else you got? Same thing. Do you go over? Oh, this is fun. No. We don't have this anymore. <laughs> Anybody else? What else you got? What do you got? <coughs> okay, so she has the product list. She's got a sticker on the front that says sale, 10% off, with a little asterisk, that says it's set for all sports and college stuff. <laughs> and she's got her information on the back, and she's got a so wax good. <laughs> sample on the back. How simple is that? Right? Sample making is super easy and fun. You gotta do them. Once you do them, you gotta pass them out. Anybody else got something? You got a perfume oil? Do you, do you rub it on people? Rub you. And you can make that fun. It doesn't have to be daunting, right? But when we include it as part of our follow-up, it can be just that fun. Dropping off an order. Do you know that every fundraiser that I do, I put a sample of something they didn't buy in the bag. About 50%, let's say I had 100 customers in the fundraiser, 50 of them will call me and say, hey, what was that stuff you put in my bag? Because I loved it. Or are there other scents? Because I really think that's so Sure. Because <laughs> we got 80 of them. Why don't I bring them over the testers and we'll have a little sip and sniff. Right? Samples can open a conversation. Whether it's through original sales, or not original sales, original contact, going to someone you don't know. Love this one. You have samples on you, you walk up to a stranger and you say, today is yellow day. <laughs> I get to give people that are wearing yellow a gift. <laughs> there you go. And usually they'll be like, well, what is this? Right? They've asked a question now, guess what? <laughs> I get to talk, right? Today, I do that all the time. I walk into Walmart. Uh, when it's candle day, that's the best because I walk up and down the candle aisle. <laughs> it's gift day, easy. You like candles? It's a gift. <laughs> but I do that with my team. I'll say, today's purple day, guys. Anybody that you see with purple, you have to give out five samples. Why can't you do that with yourself, right? Do that with yourself. Samples are so powerful. So why wouldn't we use them as part of our follow-up, right? Put them in the bags. And really guys, do yourselves a favor. If they bought sugar cookie wax, don't give them a sample of sugar cookie. <laughs> and, and you know, I, you laugh because I would, I would too. But a lot of people think, you know what? They love sugar cookies, so I'm going to give them a sample so that they have a little bit more. So do you see what they're doing there? But they're not helping with their own business because they're not opening up something different to them. If they bought sugar cookie wax <coughs> from me, I might offer them a sample of our skincare or our group care, depending on who it is that's buying, right? Want to give them something that they don't have or that they
they didn't buy. Because otherwise they'll never know about it. And they'll never try it. Why don't people try things? Because they don't know if they'll like it. They're afraid they're not going to like it. They're afraid to waste their money. So we give them stuff to try, right? why I don't use the microphone, because it's really loud. <laughs> okay, so let me ask, do you think that having the 222 system is going to give you tools for customers that you've already had? They might not be new, right? At what point of the 222 system do you think is a great point to do any customer, no matter how long they've been with you? Two months? Two months will be our last purchase. If you do two months, what kind of information will you have to ask for a sale?
so that you can move forward, right? Does that make sense? And be okay with it because we've all been there. I can guarantee you there's been months that we haven't done follow-up. Or two years. <laughs> right? But I made it through all of them. I told myself that I would call five a day. I did five a day until all 283 were done. Right? But now I know where I stand with them. Someone already found other consultants. I screwed up. And I apologize to them. I'm like, I'm sorry. But I'm really happy that you have got a new consultant. And that you didn't sense me because of my my path. And own it, right? It's okay. It's okay. But start at the beginning. Doesn't matter where or how long it's been since you've talked, because right now we're all at that beginning point, right? Unless you've been using the 222 system right from the beginning, we're all on the same page. We all now have to go back to our order list and look who, do you know who doesn't know how to do that in your workstation? If you go to your workstation and you click on contacts, there's a column that says last ordered on. If you click the header of that column, it'll sort it. So you can look when the last order was done by that customer. And if it's more than six months, you might want to contact them. Do you sort it by products, like stuff that are being discontinued? Yeah. Yeah. If you go into your contacts tab in the search field, I can type in banana nut bread. One bring back my bars out. Last month I could have done that, right? You type in bring uh, banana nut bread, everybody that's ordered banana nut bread comes up. And now I have a reason to call. Guess what? Banana nut bread is out for January only. How many do you want? <coughs> right? And then right. the last day you contacted them. So you know you talked about notes where you can enter notes. So yeah, you, you would have to do that manually. Okay. Yeah. I do uh, an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. And each tab is a month. This is like January, February, March. And what I do is when I call them, I will say, okay, well, you're at the two week stage. So now I'm actually evolving, actually. I take that back because I am evolving. My phone, I do have a smartphone that is making me smarter. And I don't even have cell phone service at my house, so ask me why I have one. <laughs> but I will use it. <laughs> uh, I will use it like if I'm on the phone with that person and I've gone through my contacts or I've gone through the slips and I'm calling them and we decide that two weeks is okay, I'll start in a couple weeks, I will actually flip my calendar to that day and put their name in. Or if it's two months, I'll go two months ahead, put their name in on a date, and then that way, every month when I get to it, I know what I need to do that day. Make sense? Any other questions? Yeah. After the two months, every two months. Or what they decided was best for them, right? If you found out that they needed to know when every new buddy came out, then it could be lately every two weeks, <laughs> right? So it depends on the conversation and the relationship that you built with them in the first couple of calls. So every month, does this one percent of the month is too much? Not unless they want it. If they want it, then yeah, it's fine. But you, you can't, see, and this is what I need you guys to get to understand. To us, Sensi addicts, when we talk Sensi 24 7, it's cool. To them, it's much. You've got to ask them, right? You've got to ask them. Do you want me to call you every month to let you know what the new Sensi and warmer of the month is? Or do you want me to just mail it? She's like, uh, 
Every person that I ask to give a sample, they say no. I'm like, well, then mail that shit. <laughs> something to add though because I walk the mall a lot for exercise and they have those people at the booths that are like oh you have some free lotion yeah. and a lot of people have that mindset of you're giving me something for free so you want me to buy from you you're at an event they no I mean like in just yeah, in like general like if you're out in general public and you're like I hey don't, I don't say sample what they get from me honey is a gift <laughs> 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 and if you got purple on that day, you might get two. <laughs> it's how you present it, right? If I came up and I said, here, I got a sample for you, you want to try it? No, I'm not you, I'm not I, 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 me too, honey. Take <laughs> but a lot of people would be like, ooh. You know, that's like that Macy's girl. Okay, well, we already found out that she is like the Macy's girl, so. <laughs> but do you see what I'm saying? If you walk up and say, here, do you want a sample? You want to try it? Right? That person who that wants to do your fingernails in the mall, he walks like this. <laughs> right? Or if I say, here, I got a gift for you. Just because you're wearing a nice skirt. You got beads. <laughs> right? It's how you present it. Right? It's how you present. So I want to leave you guys with one message before you leave today. And I think, yeah, we got one minute. Okay. So one, I told you guys that I, want, I don't want you selling anymore. No more selling. Okay? We're going to share. It's a lot easier to share. Right? Feels better. I also don't want to hear, I can't do this, I'm scared, I'm terrible at follow-up. Because you know what, if you say that you're terrible at follow-up, then you suck. Right? You don't, you, if you say you're terrible, you're terrible at follow-up. If you say you can't do it, you cannot do it. And I'm here to tell you that you are Sensi Consultants and that you are here because you all rock. You have what it takes to do these simple things. We're not selling, we're sharing. We are not out there to make people's lives miserable. We are out there to change people's lives. Whether it's by giving them a sample of our product or explaining the experience of joining our opportunity. You all have the ability to do it because you're all amazing individuals. Do not tell yourself something about yourself that you would not tell a child. I can guarantee you, you would not walk up to my grandson Noah, who happened to have been on stage this morning giving some high fives. <laughs> if you could go up to him and say, you know what, you, young man, are terrible at fall. You can't say it to somebody else, don't you dare say it to yourself. All right? You guys are amazing and you totally got this. <coughs> we got this. <laughs> <laughs>